Welcome to the great marketplace of ideas, the American University. Here, freedom of expression, honest discussion, and academic inquiry reign supreme, and the future leaders of our world meet as equals in a forum of open debate. At least that was the idea. It's an idea that's been corrupted, according to that documentary, which is called Indoctrinate You. The filmmaker is Evan Coyne Maloney, and he's here with Greg Lukianoff of the Foundation for Individual Rights in Education. FIRE is the acronym. It's a group that fights campus speech code. So what do you mean the open debate's been corrupted? The students are debating stuff. <laughs> Before I worked at FIRE, and it's been 10 years as of October, I had no idea the kind of stuff you could get in trouble for on a, on a college campus. 67% of the 390 colleges that we rate have what we would call laughably unconstitutional speech codes, things banning everything from hurtful jokes to offensive ideas to um, uncomfortable values. All right, but they're trying to create a nice climate for learning. Well, you have to make a decision at some point. Are you going to have a serious talk, um, or are you going to uh, are you going to have politeness? All right, Evan, your movie lists some samples of college speech codes and what's in them. UConn banned inappropriate laughter, and at West Virginia University, students were told not to use the terms boyfriend or girlfriend. The school says those words are too gender specific. Instead, lover and partner are preferred. <laughs> now, after your move, I mean, some of these things have gone away, right? And there are new ones now, unfortunately. Some of them have gone away, but a lot of times they get hidden in sexual harassment policies and things like that. And so the university will say, well, we don't actually have a speech code. We just have a sexual harassment policy. But when you look into what that policy states, they're so laughably broad that there's no way they would be upheld in court. And in fact, a lot of times when a group like FIRE is involved in bringing these cases to court, they, they typically lose the universities. But that doesn't mean the that universities they typically lose. The universities will lose these cases. These are not cases that are really open for debate as far as their constitutionality. But what ends up happening is that because the rules are there, people feel as though they can't engage in this discussion to begin with. You know, if you're a college freshman and you're worried about your grades, you're worried about your prof what your professors think of you, you're not going to do anything that's going to get you in trouble with the school. You're certainly not very likely to get involved in a court case that ends up you know, being a First Amendment case in federal court. Now, his movie also points out that schools invite guest speakers, and they're almost always leftists. Jesse Jackson, Maya Angelou, Ralph Nader, they constantly appear on campus. But what happens at some schools when Ward Connerly shows up? He's a black man who opposes affirmative action. Here he is at the University of Michigan. How come you're so toothpaste? It bothers you that a black man would be against your point of view. If that isn't, if that isn't saying... So he gets shouted down. Now, this can't happen too often in a climate of open inquiry. It happens all the time. And in fact, one of the things that's really pernicious that's happening now is that schools are actually trying to charge groups security fees. So if you bring a speaker that the school says is controversial, the school is going to try to charge that group a security fee for police officers and private security detail to, quote, protect their safety. But what ends up happening is that these fees are really intended to keep the speakers off campus in the first place. If you have to pay to bring a controversial speaker to campus, you might not do that. But typically what ends up happening... But I can see why the school would think that way. I mean, if Jesse Jackson comes or Ralph Nader, they'll all go like this. But with Ward Connerly, they might need security. Well, that's the beauty of the way they've rigged the game, you know. They, they decide that the people that they like the points of view of are generally non-controversial. So you're not going to charge them money. What it is, it's, it's basically a way of enforcing a heckler's veto. And this happens all the time to uh, conservative advocate uh, David Horowitz, is that uh, someone will invite him to speak on campus, and they suddenly come up with this great idea, oh, you have to pay us $5,000 if you want David Horowitz to speak. They don't do this for any other speaker, but they think this is, this is new. Now, thankfully, this is flatly unconstitutional. This has been decided by the Supreme Court. And time and time again, FIRE has gotten involved, and we've got the universities to back down. 
Now, fire is about free speech, so it really shouldn't matter if you're conservative or liberal. The free speech is free speech. But what you found is the tone comes from one direction. You're much more likely to get in trouble for some opinions than, than others, and anybody who denies that hasn't been on a campus in a long time. And one California study from Santa Clara University found for every seven professors who are registered Democrats, one is Republican. And in the so-called soft sciences, sociology, anthropology, it's 30 to 1. Aren't they embarrassed? <laughs> if you really want to look at the bias on campus, look at the political contributions of the professors and administrators, because those are overwhelmingly in one direction. Here's another clip from your movie that sort of illustrates the climate. Practically all the professors are leftists. If you don't think that way, well, you're closed-minded. You are not a good person. They really believe that this is the only view any reasonable person could possibly hold. When students are just being bombarded with those ideas everywhere, it starts to sink in. I would think it would sink in and they would brainwash people, but let me push back. You're overstating the case. Mm -hmm. Um, in my experience, people don't really know how bad it is. It's, it, it's understated. People think that speech codes went away. People don't recognize that you can get in trouble for the most ridiculous things at some of the most prestigious uh, schools in the country. I mean, we've been dealing over the, over the past year with uh, Yale. Students were prevented from having a t-shirt that featured a Fitz, uh, F. Scott Fitzgerald quote because it had the word sissy in it. Um, and uh, Yale, uh, Yale University Press pub was publishing a book called The Cartoons That Shook the World about the Muhammad cartoons, and at the last minute, Yale University intervened to prevent that book from having the Muhammad cartoons in a book about the Muhammad cartoons. And what happened at California Polytechnic? They, they had a guest speaker come in, and they put out this flyer, which seems innocuous enough. The, his book is titled leaving the plantation, and it's a quote, it's okay to leave the plantation. What happened? What ended up happening in that case was a student was hanging that flyer up in the multicultural center on campus, and several of the students in the multicultural center decided that they were offended by the word plantation. So merely having the book title in the flyer of the speaker who wrote the book. An African-American speaker. <laughs> right, is considered harassment on that campus and the student actually had the police called him. The this police came. The police did show up. He, he had left by that point but he was subjected to a year and a half of disciplinary proceedings where he had multiple hearings that lasted multiple hours where the police he was called it offensive racial material. Yeah, yeah. And, and he was being interrogated by a university attorney without being able to have any, any defense of his own. It was just him in a room and a faculty advisor up against this whole machine of the university bureaucracy. Ultimately, it did go to court. Fire helped him. Uh, it did go to court. The court said, this is insane. They, they made the university pay for his legal fees in court. When it does go to court, the schools always lose defending speech codes. The problem is, who wants to be the guy who spends their college career in court so they can say what you can say anywhere else in the country? For those tuition prices, you'd think you'd at least get free speech. America's supposed to be about liberty.